Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is the Project Investigation Collaboration Podcast. It's a collaboration between uh, the Veritas Project with the founder of the Veritas Project, Robert Curtis. Hello. And investigator Todd, uh, Todd Boyer, that is me. And uh, well, unfortunately, Bob and I found out some bad news this morning. Um, we suffer from HPS. HPS. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people suffer from HPS out there, and they go through their life and they don't realize it. Right. Um, but we read a study this weekend that uh, let us know that we suffer from HPS. Right. So HPS is actually haunted person syndrome. Yeah. And everything that Bob and I have been saying for the longest time yeah. was now uh, validated, validated yeah. yep, through this um you know i'll even show it to you guys yeah through this um through this uh this report here this uh, it's a peer-reviewed study that two doctors made and it's it's been published in over 20 journals of psychology and and uh what they call, lit liturgy is that what they call it when yeah. churches church stuff like that basically that what we've been saying for decades about how people are haunted and, and haunted things follow people and objects and and once once you you pierce the veil right once you right. you've experienced the paranormal then it's easier for you to constantly have interactions with the paranormal that's what this study uh, from scientists who are actual doctors right <laughs> not just people who who bought a, a degree from Barbados or whatever, <laughs> they're like, you refer to me as doctor. Like, that, right. that's not a real doctor. Right. <laughs> we, we do want to say hello to everybody that's coming in on uh, TikTok Live. Yeah, we're doing the TikTok so. too, so you can see the behind the scenes. So, so if you want to look us up on the, the TikTok, we're there too. You know, we're not, we're not doing silly dances. Yeah. <laughs> you, you won't see me dressed up like a bunny rabbit or whatever they do. You yep. know, what are those things? Furries. We're not, yep. we're not furry people. We're just but, regular, uh, regular dudes. But uh, investigator live on TikTok or investigator Todd on TikTok, man, it's 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 morning. Yeah, my brain's not braining. Yeah, I got I got called out this morning. This is the life of a funeral director. I got called out at three o'clock this morning, so it is now. What is it? Ten uh, thirty. Yeah, ten thirty. So, but so to get back to where we were, basically, like I said, everything that we normally say on here about. Believing is seeing, yeah. right? And the atmosphere you put yourself in, um, those things are all things that are validated now in this, right? In, in this, this study. in this study, you know, everything that Bob and I talk about every time we yeah. talk about ghosts, yeah, we now have validation. I want to frame this. I'm telling you, <laughs> I want to put this on my wall. I want to frame it, and um, you know, because it, it's it's funny that literally word for word the things that bob and i talk about yep. um are validated by doctors yeah you know i guess we're the smartest doctors i mean <laughs> that's what that boils down to right? right so so what they talk about um in this study is like he said once once you see it once you're more likely to see it and it has right. to do with um it also has to do with where where, when, how your yeah. mental state is. Right. And here's the crazy thing. It's contagious. Yeah. It's contagious. Right. So if you're, yeah. so it's like an energy that you put off. So it's kind of funny. How many times have we been on, when we did the tours back in the day, the people come in, oh, I don't believe in this, I don't right, believe in right, that. Right. And they left believing yeah. because of the things that happened to them on the tour. Yeah. Apparently, it was contagious. Yeah. So, and you the, know, another aspect of that contagion is that when, once you you explain the haunting to someone else, mm -hmm. then when they go home and experience it for themselves, then they understand that that's what that is. Right. Right. Whereas before, they might have just thought there was a tapping on the wall or or a shuffling sound at night yeah. and just went back to sleep. But because you said, "Hey, I have a ghost," and it makes X. You right know, sounds and you make it make sense right so then that's that's what they're talking about is the, the contagion of it is that now other people realize that's what that is it's not it's not a natural thing it's it's a paranormal thing right and then now they're haunted so right and they can pass it on to someone else you know and say hey this happened to me 
I, I wonder if that's kind of an, you know, because we all have energy frequencies. I wonder if that's an energy frequency thing. You know what I'm saying? If right. we're passing on that portion of our energy frequency to other people. Could we? You know? Yeah. Or, or a definitely. certain vibration, energy vibration, you know? Um, so the more in distress you are, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and the more uneasy you are, which you go into a dark place that's creepy. Yeah. the more likely you are to see this. Right. And so that, that's the funny thing. So it, it literally is a matter of being afraid makes you more, more likely to see a ghost. Exactly. And that was, that's all in this, yeah. all in this, in this study. In this study, yeah. They talk about how, um, oh, I, I can't articulate. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, if you're in that mindset, then you're more susceptible right. to, to experience a paranormal thing. Which so, falls along into our believing is seeing. Right. That right. we've been saying for, always forever. Seen. Here's the crazy thing. Having one paranormal experience is very unlikely. Yeah. You, after you have one, you're more likely to have a lot more. Yep. So. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So all, all the stuff that we say all the time about hauntings and explaining hauntings to people and, and all that. And people are just like, Pfft. and now it's completely validated and here in this study. It's all, all laid out. Like he, he even talks about how, um, it's like a stalking. There, there's a stalking aspect to it because people like go to a, a place that, that they know is haunted, you know, looking for right. the ghost. So it, it becomes like a, a collective stalking thing. <laughs> well, I guess we're stalkers. Right. We're ghost stalkers. Yeah. Ghost isn't, that, isn't that crazy? <laughs> like all the stuff you read this thing and you're like, I know that, I know that, I know that. You're like, wow. We were reading, I was reading through that this morning. You sent it to me yesterday, I yeah. guess. And I read through it this morning and I'm like, this is like word for word what we say. Yeah. Like every time we talk about hauntings. If you ever need validation, there, yeah. there it is. So, yeah. And it was also saying that religion helps with yeah. getting past the, the HPS. Right. So yeah. that's just, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to say. I, it, I mean, it's, it's just mind blowing 100%. that everything that we've said is now validated. Yeah. And I don't feel like such a lunatic. <laughs> so... <laughs> Right, we're right. not the fringe anymore. <clears throat> and, so. you know, we, the more that we've experienced, the more we see. Yeah. And people are like, oh, have you seen this or have you seen that? And it's like, let me tell you the stories. You know what I mean? Right. It, 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 oh, yeah. Because we expose ourselves to that over and over and over again. And I know, I know Bob and I probably, you know, between the two of us, 500 investigations easily. Oh, yeah, easy. You know houses large large places you know and yeah. and seeing things that would just blow your mind oh yeah you know, know. like yeah. things you can't explain like if you go if you go back into into my TikToks and my original ones on on investigator todd and i know I, you showed the picture before mm -hmm. of the shadow figure in a basement right you know how do you explain that away you know yeah. you i mean it's it's a full-on person leaning out looking shadow with no reason for it to be there yeah you know and and i know you've experienced <laughs> you know things oh, yeah. and well you it, it, it in the presence of a real like like not just like your your basic level shadow person like right. you know the shadow like a real skilled you know shadow person you it you can't debate that that's a thing because the the temperature goes down you know right. they can make a room darker like you could just feel the oppression in the area where they're at right you know yeah and she will say well that's just not real like there's no possible way that it could not be real right you know even even if you you don't look at it from the spiritual aspect of it you know like what what is it? a shadow person never w was alive they weren't a person right you know so what is it you know i don't know that that's the whole thing right i'm not making an assumption and trying to influence someone's belief i'm just telling you this is a thing and it happens right that's why we study this and we thank you guys for uh tapping that screen over here on uh on the live oh, you yeah. know and and getting our numbers up and sending us out to the fyp and and the gifts we appreciate that <laughs> my uh, sisters yeah <laughs> my, sister, my sister's on the live nice Yay. but um <laughs> so 
I derailed my train of thought. Yay, ADHD. <laughs> Woo, roll me. Right? I need more coffee. <laughs> yep. Self-medicate on right. that uh, on that caffeine. But, yeah, just, just the thought that we're validated now. Yeah. You know? Oh, and we also want to thank everybody. Uh, we hit over 5,000 5, subscribers yeah. uh, this 5, past week. 5,088 this week. So, yeah, we did it. That's a milestone. Yeah. We're going to have and to celebrate that. We broke um, two, 250 hours of views on youtube nice that's awesome so that's awesome. yeah we need three thousand <laughs> so, watch cracking. the youtube yeah um <laughs> so where do you think yours started i mean what do you think your first paranormal experience was that 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 triggered and now your hps when when i was a little probably about three we we lived in the house it was in the middle of a cornfield mm -hmm. and you always would see stuff moving out of your periphery, you know, past the door frames right, and, and right. that kind of stuff when I was a little kid. So that, that's that's when I first I first noticed it, you know. And then talking to talking to other kids about uh, ghosts and and you know things like that, you know, telling ghost stories. And I used to read the horror comic books, you know, back then. Right. And you just um, I don't want to say you develop like a. You do though. You do. You. It's kind. Of, it's. And I know what you're trying to say. You you start to get a feel for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like, well, I read I read a story about a ghost that did this, and then I noticed this right. happened in our house, so that's got to be the same thing. Right. Right. And then eventually, it just, you know. You're, and that's you're the in same that thing. Life. I think our first house that I lived in up until I was five, I think there was something going on in the upstairs. Um, it was it was a two bedroom house, hmm. and my bedroom was back in the corner. Me and my sister shared a bedroom, but then my parents' bedroom was the upstairs. You know how the they have the slanted roof, and they, were, oh, yeah. they made a bedroom out of it and everything. But I always felt uneasy. You know, I even recall at you know five uh -huh. how uneasy I felt up yeah, there, like somebody's watching you. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's where mine started too, and then you know it carries on from there. And there's a lot of places, and we've always said that instinct is a big yeah. thing in, oh, yeah. in paranormal and ghost hunting so if you feel things if you feel something is there start taking pictures yeah like just i mean it's all about recording you know record do yeah. your evp sessions and um <laughs> you know it's just a matter of 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 what you feel you know yeah well back back when we started investigating it, it, it cost a lot to take a picture yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. You, you had to have film yep. and Polaroids and stuff. So you, you develop that feeling first. Right. Because film was expensive. You know, like now you could take a thousand photos and don't cost anything. Right. You know, but back in the day, you know, 20 photos was like $10, you know. So right. you, you were right. very stingy about what you actually took a picture of. So you'd be on an investigation and you would wait until you got that, you know, there's that something right feeling. there. And right. And then snap the picture of it, you know. And I got... I got to the point, and I know I've discussed this before, where if I just get the chills on my arms, that's just me being freaked out. Yeah, yeah. But if I walk into a room and it starts at the base of my skull and goes all the way down to my feet, <laughs> that's that's a high energy room. Right. right. And we've had Chill. other investigators who would do spirit communications. If I said this is the room, that's the room she set up in. Right. Like she trusted my feeling that much that she would set up in that room. You know, because I usually caught great evidence because of it, because just oh, using yeah. my instincts, you right, know. Right, right. You so. have to have that instinct. That's what we're talking about in this in this uh, finding, in this study, that, that people develop that sense that paranormal is around, and then because that, then spirits want to communicate with you. Yeah. I see you, Ty. She says her, uh, her grandma's house was where she remembers her first experience. Oh. So... Well, send us a send us a, a write up of your, yeah. your experience. I mean, we'll talk about. It. Yep. Shoot us an email. We have the email addresses at the end. We'd we'll be glad to tell the story. Yeah. So if you guys have any stories, you know, we'll be glad to to read them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to send us an email about yeah, them, yeah, give us. We'll give you our opinion. Yep. They're they'll be at the end of the podcast, so you actually have to you have to go to YouTube. We'll yeah. You go to YouTube. <laughs> so. Yeah. In the outro, I put a little a card that has the. Has both our Hold email, the email addresses. addresses on there. So, oh, so as a teenager, before you started doing the paranormal investigations, was that something you ran into a lot? Was continued 
you know, experiences. Yeah. So, you know, what, what kind of stuff did you fall into as a teenager? Um, well, in my early teens, I went to a school in Collinsville. It was a big, great big old, old building. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Webster was, was the name of it. It was huge. You know, building had been there forever. You know, right. been a school forever. You know how we talk about schools and that right. energy, and that place was full of that energy. Yeah. You know, like stuff would move. You'd hear footsteps, doors opening and closing, and stuff like that. So that kind of was was another thing. I used to love to hang out in the library there whenever I got time. We'd play Dungeons another and Dragons, another haunted place. Or, yeah. You know, read books or something. Yeah, and it was always like it's always something going on there. You know. But as a kid, you kind of overlook it, you know. But now, as an adult, you look back on it and you're like, "Wow, it was crazy what happened in that place." Right, and I I know that <laughs> I grew up in a small town, um, population 800. Hmm. So a lot of times after school, you know, there wasn't any security on the school that I knew of. No, they didn't. You know, cameras, no nothing. Yeah, the so, 80s, there was no security at school. You know, we'd run basketball <laughs> practice or you know track or whatever, yeah. and you could walk around the whole school. Oh yeah. But I didn't. Because it just, I mean, it just felt like there was something there, you know. And then um, when I was about 16, I had a, a shadow person, um, Halloween night. I think I told this story before where we were walking through uh, a, a very old cemetery in Valmeyer, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And a shadow figure was following us through the woods. Huh. I mean, we could literally see, a, it was dark, obviously, but it was darker. Because the street light, lights, the way the cemetery is, is... Um, it's in the woods and it's on the side of the bluffs, right? On a flat spot. Oh yeah. Right. But then the street ran right next to it. So you could, you could, the, the, the street lights were shining into the cemetery. Mm. So there was still enough light to, to move around and see and whatnot. But then this shadow started at the back and followed us like, cause we'd stop and, and like, am I hearing something? Right. Right. You know, you can see this dark figure coming towards us and like <laughs> chased us through the cemetery and yeah we got the hell out of there <laughs> yeah, yeah so. shadow people that, that's another weird thing because we talk about the shadow people and why why they're attracted to uh libraries and cemeteries and things like that it's because the shadow the shadow people as an entity they feed off of negative energy mm -hmm. you know so they'll hang out in the cemetery to absorb all of that you know negative energy that comes from having the graveside right service or people who come to visit the grave you know and they're they feel bad and the the shadow people feed off of that right you know that's why they come in your house and mess with you at night because they want you to to be distressed about it because they like that and that negative energy they say the the best way to get rid of uh, a haunting or a shadow person or any even even the demonic end of shadow people is just ignore it Right. And if you don't let them know that you see them, then they'll go do something else. Now, see, that makes me that makes me wonder, right? With the whole HPS, right? I was thinking mm. about that um, as we were talking about this. So, if we're here talking about it, and somebody's watching our videos, uh -huh. I wonder if we're spreading that HPS. Oh, of course. On through just talking about it. Yeah. So. I, had, I was I had a great conversation with somebody the other day. We we were at a visitation talking about you know hauntings and stuff, and I noticed that um, that that show a haunting. Mm -hmm. People who watch that show live in haunted houses. Really. And I I was was purposing back then. You know this was before this I read this study that watching a haunting with the spirit in your house teaches them how to manifest things <laughs> because the spirit is watching the show while you're watching it right and they hear like oh man i can move doors <laughs> i never tried to move a door right i can knock oh. on the wall I, i'm gonna try that right oh, so now that's crazy because i it's a thing now that people who watch a haunting the the old discovery show right you know, it their houses are haunted and i i was my 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 thesis was is that you're teaching the ghost how to interact how to with people, interact and right? haunt that is awesome that is a great theory and, that is awesome and it's it's a thing you can look it up the the people people say that i i, I binge watched you know four seasons of a haunting and now my windows slam and the doors <laughs> close in the middle of the night 
and and I wonder if that's a part of it. This is the haunted haunted people syndrome, and then well, you are watching the show that then gives the entity or spirit or ghost or whatever they are the instructions on how to torment you. <laughs> and then you go to work and you're like, man, I'm so tired. The door was knocking all night. I'm like, oh, really? And then they go home and their ghost is like, what? I can knock on the door? Man, I've been trying to move this stupid light bulb for like six months. <laughs> I didn't know you could just knock on the door. <laughs> so then, like I so said, we'll get back to where it says religion helps the HPS. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's kind of crazy that, you know, that that works in that way. Right. But I don't know if it's a spiritual changing of energy or... Well, I, you know, there, there's that, um, the crossing over aspect of right, it. Right, right. You know, so I, I wonder, I, I, I think that's what they're talking about, is that people, you know, the, that have a deep religious connection can have have a one-on-one -on -one with the, the entity, you know, the ghost, and be like, hey, you know, there's nothing for you here anymore. You know, your family's gone. It's time for you to... Go into the light, Carolyn. <laughs> right? Like there's there's a time, you know, when you could have communicated with people, but you know, your family is gone, your time is gone, there's no reason for you to hang out here. Right. You know, go on into the next life. You know, a person who's a believer would can articulate that to the spirit, and the spirit's like, Yeah, what am I gonna do here? You know. Right. I've been trying to push this vase off of this shelf for like two and a half years. I got nowhere right. with it. So I'm going to go do something else now. <laughs> so we just wanted to today, um, you know, talk about, like I said, uh, share our validation. Yeah, we're and, excited. And, and pass on some of that HPS to you guys. So <laughs> we will gladly infect you guys with there HPS you so you can go out there and experience right. your own things. I don't know if it's on Netflix or if it's on Amazon Prime, but the whole the whole ser the whole series of a haunting is on one of those streaming. One a haunted house. There you go. Just yeah. watch that for a while. Just watch that for a couple weeks, and and you'll be uh, you'll be wishing you hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, thank you for joining us uh, for another podcast. I know this isn't a longer podcast for us, but no, uh, it's like 20, 20 something minutes. So. People usually only watch about seven anyway. So. <laughs> But, um, you know, check us out on all the socials, yep. RRS Curtis and the Veritas Project and, uh, you know, over here on the TikTok. Uh, and then you can follow me, um, Investigator Todd, on all platforms. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we thank you guys for subscribing to the podcast, uh, especially, you know, a lot of... Look, we're really big in Vietnam and the Philippines. Vietnam and the Philippines, right. Who knew? We're yeah. taking off in Japan. I'm so. huge in Japan. <laughs> yeah, we need those shirts to say I'm huge in Japan. Um, but, you know, we thank you guys for joining us this week. Yeah. And uh, remember... Stay curious. And find the truth. And we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah.